This week we're going to be talking about patterns of organization. Um, so follow along with this slideshow and we'll learn about the nine different patterns of organization. Okay, first, uh, when reading, a good strategy is to look for patterns of organization. When reading, always look for signal words in the paragraph. These signals point to or clarify the relationship of one detail in a paragraph to the other details and or to the main idea of the paragraph. Um, so this is a good strategy that will help you in your reading. Um, these patterns you will also use in your writing class. Um, and you can follow along with this PowerPoint, uh, but the information is also in page 9 of your reading supplement. Okay, what are the nine common patterns of organization? So first we have time order or chronological. Number two, listing or listing order. Number three, steps in a process, um, or some people just call it process or a process paragraph. Number four, descriptive. Number five, examples, uh, which are usually a part of a paragraph or essay, like supporting details. Number six, cause and effect. Number seven, comparison. Number eight, contrast. And number seven and eight are often combined to be compare, contrast, or we say compare and contrast. Uh, number nine, definition. Okay, let's look at each one in a little bit more detail. Uh, first, we have time order, which is the chronological um, organizational pattern. The goal for the writer is to organize events in the time uh, when, which they happened. Uh, this is a great pattern for telling a story. And the signal words you'll see in this type of paragraph or essay um, are listed here. After, at last, before, currently, during, soon, then, finally, following, in a year, in a month, in a day, in the meantime, next, until, and then first, second, or third. Okay, let's look at an example of a time order paragraph. Um, this first one I'll read and then we'll look at it together. I will never forget the first time I got lost in New York City. I was traveling with my parents during summer vacation. We were in Macy's department store, and I was so excited to see such a huge place. Suddenly, I turned around to ask my mom something, but she was gone. Then I began crying and screaming at the top of my lungs. A sales clerk came up to me and asked if I was okay. She got on the, mo the public address, or PA, system and notified the customers that a little boy with blue jeans and a red cap was lost. Two minutes later, my mom and dad came running towards me. We all cried and hugged each other. Every time I see, every time that I see a Macy's, I am reminded of that terrified boy. Um, so you see those signal words listed in bold, uh, during, suddenly, then, two minutes later, um, and they show that this is a time order paragraph. Um, notice also that this is a story. Um, so again, stories are really, um, really good to um, organize in this kind of time order or chronological um, organizational pattern. Okay, next, uh, listing or listing order. Um, this is probably the most common paragraph that you have written thus far. Uh, in level one, we, we write a lot of listing order paragraphs. So the goal for the writer is to tell information in a list when it is not important uh, which order that those, uh, that those items happened. Um, so, for example, there might be three reasons that Richland College is a great school, uh, but the order of those three reasons don't really matter. So you might say, oh, Richland College is inexpensive. And you say, oh, Richland College has a beautiful campus. Um, and then the third one, oh, Richland College has a very diverse group of students. So those three reasons could be in any order, uh, but they're just three reasons um, that explain why Richland College is a good school. Um, so the, the signal words that you'll see in this paragraph uh, will be uh, like follow or following, first, second, third is very common and that's what we've done in writing class. Certainly in level one we did a lot of first, second, third. Um, you might have a colon like this um, and then you might have numbers like one, two, three um, similar to first, second, third or letters, A, B, C. 
and then sometimes it might just be a bullet, a, a list of bullets or dashes um, or asterisks. This is the asterisk here. Okay, let's look at an example. Here we are with the listing order example. Uh, it says, camping in national parks is a popular free time activity in the United States. Successful campers always carry the following items. First, they have clothing that is appropriate for the weather, such as extra jackets, comfortable boots, and rain gear. Second, they carry food that is easy to pack and doesn't spoil, as well as equipment to cook or prepare in. Prepare it. Pots, a skillet, plates, or bowls, silverware, matches, etc. Third, campers always carry a good compass and a first aid kit when they go camping. Getting lost in accidents are never good, but they do happen on occasion. Other items on a camper's must-have list might be A. Binoculars to watch wildlife B. Bug spray for protection against mosquitoes C. Sunglasses and D. Sun sunscreen for those sunny days. Uh, so again, you see those, um, those signals listed in bold that show the listing order. Okay, number three, steps in a process, or some people just call it process, a process paragraph or a process essay. So the purpose here is to tell how to get a result step by step. Um, so when you think about um, how to cook something uh, or a recipe, uh, you think about um, someone teaching you how to do car repairs or some kind of do-it-yourself instructions, um, this step-by-step -step process is a great way to, um, to write those kind of um, instruction guides. Uh, the signal words you'll see are after, process, step, instructions, procedure, directions, first, second, third, again, um, at this point, at this stage, and the, the word then. Um, let's look at this example. This time I'm not going to read it. Uh, you can pause the video if you want and read through this example. Um, I think it's kind of interesting and funny example. Um, so look at that and then look at the words in bold and you'll see that's a step in uh, or steps in a process. Okay, moving on to number four. We have a descriptive paragraph or descriptive essay. Um, so the purpose here is to help the reader imagine a picture. Um, so there are a lot of adjectives and location words with a descriptive paragraph. Um, this is great for scenery, nature, or describing any place. Um, and it adds, it really adds a lot of interest in, in a paragraph. Um, a lot of fiction has descriptive uh, paragraphs. Signal words would be lots and lots of adjectives, like sensory adjectives, so words for different colors, shape, size, texture, smell, textures on there twice, and material, um, all those kind of things, so those adjectives. Uh, next would be location words, uh, which would show a spatial order, and some people divide spatial order and descriptive, but really spatial order is a type of descriptive writing. Um, so you'll hear these kind of words, on the left, on the right, next to, behind, in front of, around, below, above. Um, okay, here's the example. Again, I'm not going to read this one. You can read it and then look at all those signal words in bold. Again, it would be helpful to pause your video here uh, and then read it and get an idea of what descriptive paragraphs look like. Okay, number five, we have examples. The purpose of examples are to provide support for the writer's point. Um, using these examples. Um, or examples might give, uh, you might give a few examples about a certain thing in your paragraph. Um, so usually examples are supporting details. They don't really provide the structure for the whole paragraph or the whole essay, uh, but they're a part of the essay or part of the paragraph. So the signal words for examples are, for example, specifically, for instance, in particular, including, to illustrate, such as, and to demonstrate. So those are our signal words. Um, here is an example paragraph of an example paragraph. So the structure of this paragraph um, lists some examples. Um, see how it says there are numerous examples of important religious holiday celebrations. And then it gives a list of, of examples here cause and effect. Um, the goal of cause and effect 
is to show the reasons or results of something. Um, and soon, if not already, you will write a cause and effect essay. Um, certainly in level three of the AECI program, you write a cause and effect essay. The signal words for this type of structure are as a consequence, as a result, because, and this one is very, very common, so look out for that one, consequently, due to, for, for this reason, hence, lead to, since, so, therefore, and thus. So um, those are the signal words for cause and effect. Um, so here's an example. Uh, you'll also see the words consequence or consequences. Um, those show um, cause and effects. Uh, in this case, consequences show effects of something, something negative usually. Um, so here's the example. Again, I'm not going to read it. It's about plagiarism, but I'll let you pause the video, uh, read it, and then get an idea of the cause and effect structure. Number seven, comparison. The goal of comparison is to show how two things are alike or similar. Remember, synonyms are a comparison. They show how things are similar or alike. Um, so this is similar. Um, a note here, comparison and contrast are often used together in the same paragraph. So you show some things that are similar and you show some things that are different. Um, so you'll, you'll often see those together. The signal words here for comparison are both in comparison, as or just as, in the same way, like, likewise, similarly, and so. Um, so look at this example with a comparison. In this case, the paragraph is all comparison. It shows all similarities. Uh, like I said, many paragraphs, they show similarities and differences. Uh, but go ahead and pause the video again, uh, read this paragraph, and look at those key signal words in bold. Okay, number eight, contrast. So these are um, these are paragraphs which show difference uh, or structures that show difference uh, between two items. So that's the goal of a contrast structure. So the signal words here are although, even though, but or yet, in contrast, rather than, however, on the other hand, nevertheless, instead, and unlike. So these show differences, how things are different. Here's an example. You'll notice the keywords different, um, but, does not agree, on the other hand. So those all signal differences or contrast. Again, pause the video so you can read this paragraph and then see a good example of a contrast structure. Okay, last but not least, definition. Uh, the definition paragraph, the goal is to define, clarify, or explain the meaning of something. And this structure uh, might not be used in the whole paragraph. Sometimes it is, uh, but sometimes it is just used in maybe one or two sentences to define one word. Um, again, they're helpful to introduce new words or explain a whole new idea. When they explain kind of a big idea, you might find a whole paragraph that's like a definition paragraph. The signal words here are means, is defined as, is called, refers to, term, and concept. And here's your last example for the definition paragraph. Uh, you'll see some keywords there like is defined as, uh, concept, means, and so on. Uh, so again, pause the video, uh, read that paragraph, and then you can have a good example of a definition structure. Okay, when you finish, um, go ahead and review in your reading supplement. All of these are listed in a chart, and they're all on one page. So that will be very helpful for you. Um, then, uh, next class, we'll have some time to practice this. Um, and continuing on through the rest of the session, we will practice um, and, and um, look through these different patterns of organization. You'll, you'll use these both in your writing class and in your reading class, so these are important to learn um, and understand the concepts behind them. All right, thank you. Have a great week.